The Hadley Learning Community is a £60 million PFI development in Telford, Shropshire. An extended school with integrated primary and secondary phases, it's a cutting-edge facility designed to be the school of tomorrow, today. This is the HLC. Architects and engineers worked with an LEA to produce a visionary design. It covers 26,000 square meters with 740 rooms. Its concrete frame helps to keep it at an even temperature. Hundreds of kilometers of fiber optic cables serve hundreds of PC workstations. And in a move that provides a blueprint for building schools for the future, when it came to the design, it was teachers who had the final say. I have this amazing opportunity with almost a blank sheet of paper to create something innovative and different and creative. When we first um, were shortlisted and started to design the school, we got it completely wrong. Hadley is on the poorer side of the tracks in the borough of Telford and Rekin, and local people have been hit hard by the demise of traditional industry. What we're hoping to do through Hadley is raise achievement in an area of, of considerable social need, um, but also provide a one-stop shop for children, young people and the whole community so that they can access a, a full range of services, lifelong learning, and hopefully we'll engender a love of learning naught to 90. The site was derelict for 10 years after an old secondary school was demolished and includes playing fields bequeathed to the local community more than 100 years ago. The design is based on a wheel with the blocks that house the separate schools radiating around the rim. There's a special school for the profoundly disabled, a primary phase, a secondary school wing, and a children's centre and community facilities. It's a head teacher's dream. What's so excited me about it is it's a once in a lifetime opportunity for me as a head teacher to say, crikey, these are all the issues that have always irritated me about schools. And here I have this amazing opportunity with almost a blank sheet of paper to create something innovative and different and creative and you know, I'm getting enormous satisfaction from doing that. The process began four years ago when the borough of Telford and Rekin invited PFI Consortia to design and build a learning community. Architects face the challenge of bringing together all the elements of an extended school in a single low-rise building. When we first um, were shortlisted and started to design the, the school, we got it completely wrong and uh, we're going down the wrong the wrong avenues. We hadn't actually quite understood what the uh, ethos of the educational model was about. Telford and Rekin didn't want a traditional campus with buildings scattered about, so James Hanley came back to the table with a design concept where all the component buildings were linked to each other and could interact. And they all come together to form what we called a central forum in the middle whereas the forum is the sort of the heart and soul and the identity to the school, we felt that we'd actually hit the spot and that this, this conceptual idea was what they were looking for. The HLC is a PFI project. IDAS Architects worked for the construction company Interserve, backed by the HBOS Bank. The consortium was awarded the contract to build the HLC and run it for 25 years. James Hanley's design worked up during a two-year bidding process had helped secure the deal. Construction finally began in November 2004. We see this, this project as a great opportunity for us in the education sector. We have got a good background within the sector of delivering on time. We haven't failed on one yet, um, and we have no intention on, on failing on this one. The school is going to be opened in stages. The secondary phase had to be ready first by September 2006. Interserve had less than two years to get it built. 
It was time to bring on board the principal of the HLC, Dr. Jill Etuff. It's, it's complicated now, doesn't it? It's March 2005 in a porter cabin in Telford. Are we going to have one and a half doors for ICT, are we? Question. Architects and builders might make sure it looks fabulous from the outside, but it's Jill's brief to make sure it works for the students learning on the inside. Just need to really look at that. Here I am, standing in a corridor that I've been discussing on a plan. <laughs> we're now walking down the main secondary corridor and we're looking now over into the engineering gallery, which is this massive 200 square metre space. Will all these come back? What I'm trying to do here is make sure that in the staff workroom I've got sufficient workstations, bins and the pin boards and the coat hook. And they're the sort of things that irritate staff who haven't got anywhere to hang their coats or, or whatever. Every single room has to be laid out and equipped for teaching before being signed off to the letter of a complex PFI contract. It's going to be a long day, this one. I've got a lot to do, and room sign-offs and things, and checking everything. And I think we're all losing the will to live, actually. <laughs> to do away with the need for hundreds of brickies on site, a method of hanging textured concrete panels onto the frame is adopted. Trent panels are simply craned into place and bolted onto steel brackets. 400 are used altogether. Modern construction techniques like this mean InterServe are in with a shout of opening on schedule. Some of the Trent panels are etched with educational slogans in different languages. The use of interior colour is a crucial part of the design. Carefully choosing coordinating colours for the walls and floorings of the HLC give students a sense of place in each of the different phases of the building. Oh my God, you've done loads! A colour wheel is produced by the architects, but Jill Etuff's idea about having a palette of bright corporate colours is challenged by the needs of the special school at the HLC. If you're a child, what colour would you describe that as? Students with ASD can't cope with strong colours, yet need tones distinct enough to provide the necessary signposting for different areas of the school. If you imagine a world and you don't understand language, you don't understand what's said to you, you find it very difficult to discriminate written information. It's actually your environment that gives you your messages about where you're at. Mm. And we haven't got it quite right. And absolutely, and the two, it's the too close. Yeah, too close. A solution is found that marries subtle, muted tones in the special school with the brighter themes chosen for the mainstream. Ooh. 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 I think there's now enough contrast between those. Bits. I think if you put that with the walls and stuff, you're looking at yeah. a corridor that's now, now yeah. I'm in yellow. Yeah. Yes. And now I'm in green. green. And then you've got that here. And that, I think, would work. It's just one of the many challenges Jill Etoff's faced in the past two years. This job has been all-consuming. And I cannot believe how hard I've worked and the amount I've had to deal with. When I took on the job, I probably had a fairly naive view of what I needed to do. But the level of detail and the issues that I've had to deal with have been very, very challenging. The rate of progress on site was remarkable given the tight deadlines the building programme had to meet under the PFI contract. All of that will be the signature colour, but I want all this carpeted as well. A tight building programme, a clever construction system and favourable weather mean the HLC is going up on time and on budget. That's where you'd have one of your pricing screens. I put the roof, that wasn't there. Seed and roof. So here's my office and there's my roof. Each one's got a different coloured flower. It's so going to look yeah, amazing. Reds, yellows, whites, pinks, blues. Welcome to the Handley Learning Community. The circular layout of the HLC allows easy movement around the building, key to facilitating a cross-phase curriculum. Breakout spaces allow learning away from conventional classrooms. There's a cavernous learning resource centre with plenty of private study rooms. The restaurant overlooks the central forum, a calm, relaxing place for students to take time out or to use as an outdoor classroom. 
It's also a performance space which the community can share, along with the swimming pool and a theatre and dance studio. And, uh, when you're upstairs, you can't get but there's an acknowledgement from the principal and the architect of the HLC that the classrooms are still pretty traditional. Doesn't it still have the typical boxes for 30 kids and a teacher just like any other school? We've got that sort of traditional, yes, we need some classroom boxes, as you call them, but we've also got some big flexible spaces which we can move students into and match that to the curriculum. In terms of flexibility and being able to make schools that are being built now flexible, the most flexible spaces are square ones or regular ones anyway. Mm. And so in this scheme, we quite deliberately made the teaching spaces fairly standard in terms of with the corridor and uh, teaching spaces on either side in the knowledge that there is the possibility of being able to knock it all down and open it all up if that's what's needed. New ways of learning and an increased use of ICT are happening but Jill Etoff has to work with current day realities. Well, yeah, they may be doing some distance learning. They may be video conferencing with a school in America or Hong Kong or wherever. But at the moment, our education system still functions around examinations and children at the end of the day have to sit in the exam hall and write answers. And again, until we know what will happen you know, in terms of children gaining qualifications in the future, it's, it's really difficult to second guess it because we keep dismantling parts of the system, but we're still based on a pretty old traditional model of, of an output, which is you know, a, a written exam for 99% you know, of students. With a £70 million pound PFI contract, the HLC is in the media spotlight. The central forum is at the heart of the design. This will be where children from all parts of the organisation will meet and get to know each other. Movement throughout the building is easy through air recirculation routes. This is your sort of basic classroom. This is over I think it's 60 square metres, this room, so it's well above the FPS spec. Classrooms are equipped with all the modern teaching aids you'd expect. The engineering specialism is well provided for. Science and technology are a major part of the curriculum. The environment helps with behaviour. Children are less likely to run down corridors if they can't be cheered. It just adds to an air of you know, civility and calmness, which is what I want to create. Catering facilities are first class. There's hundreds of lockers and bag stores. We put these in every single teaching space in the secondary phase. Safety and security are ensured. And millions have been spent on ICT. Flexible spaces for flexible learning, indoors and outdoors. Yeah, it looks like a good place to come and learn. And the children said that's what they want. They want to be inspired. They want a building which you know, is not like where they are at the moment.